This here is the Apple iPhone 16 Pro Max. It just came today. In this video I'm going to unbox it. I also have a gift box from Banks with some covers. This here is the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So, besides uh, some new things, a new ultra-wide camera and a camera control button, of course, also a new CPU SOC. Of course, the software is new. Hmm. This is going to be very, very interesting in the next few weeks. So this is the iPhone 16 Pro Max, the iPhone 15 Pro Max. In this video, I'm going to unbox it. Also try to see really how different is the new one from the old, yes, the new one from the old one. And take a look, by the way, yeah. The box is just a bit bigger and it's just, there is a difference, guys. I think it starts promising. Let's start. iPhone 16 Pro Max versus the iPhone 15 Pro Max. First thing I want to show you guys is, although of course those are very similar phones, they are new things. First thing to start is the bezel that is really less compared to the 15 Pro Max, but there is also a difference in the size of the screen because the iPhone 15 Pro Max came with a 6.7 inches display and the iPhone 16 Pro Max has 6.9 inches. Also, there is a very tiny difference in the boxes. This box is just a slightly bit higher than the 16 Pro Max and the 16 Pro Max is just a tiny bit taller but overall they are very much the same and this is why I have the Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max here to compare it later with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. I do also have a Craft Tomorrow premium iPhone 16 case gift box by Banks which I'm going to unveil here. I don't really know what is inside and I have this almost like for two months right so I'm very thrilled to see right type of cases I'm gonna get. So now let's unbox the iPhone 16 Pro Max and see what we have inside the box. I like this, you don't need tools anymore like this to perform the unboxing. All right, it wiggles. I just got the very same boring color that I also got on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. All right, you can just see, yeah, it is kind of boring, but it's also a safe bet, you know, like a lot of people will go with this. So now, I'm just taking the phone in my hand and I do believe we have here the first big difference. Okay, big difference, I know it's not so big, but when the iPhone 15 Pro Max was launched, yeah, we have some Apple stickers here. No Apple stickers this time. Why Apple? I mean, this was so nice. You can put it on your car and then everybody will know that you're using Apple products. So sadly, it's rest in peace for the Apple stickers. This here is the new booklet of the iPhone 16 Pro Max. As I said, rest in peace Apple sticker. Most probably the prices right now of original Apple stickers are gonna get crazy on eBay. Yeah, we'll have to see. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside. Standard experience, okay? You just have to peel this off. And voila, ladies and gentlemen, the iPhone 16 Pro Max. This is last year's model, the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And of course, the first thing we want to see is this really the same phone. Like, how can we spot some design differences? So here we start with the edges. I think the first change of the design is here, right? Definitely a gray tone. Here, more like a black tone. Could be also just color. On this side, again, the same observation here. We have gray color here. Again, it's a darker color. We have the same buttons here. So we have the action button and then also the volume rocker. All right, the slot for the SIM card looks almost the same. Let's just see what happens from the back. It's exactly the same, all right? But when we turn the phone, to its other side, this new camera control button is capacitive, also pressure sensitive. It's used to control the camera. You can do a lot of things with this. I'm gonna showcase in the video. The iPhone 15 Pro Max without a case, 220 grams, all right? Originally to, to one, okay, right now I measured 220 grams and this is the iPhone 15 Pro Max, all right? Two to six, originally two to seven, so I do believe what you're getting is only six grams heavier compared to the previous generation. I do believe that one of the biggest changes that you'll notice here is indeed in the display, not only being with zero to inches bigger, but also take a look at those bezels. And on the front, both of them are using Corning made glass. Now, this one here was grade five. This here is also grade five, but Apple claims to be 50% more tougher. I'm not sure how we can measure this. Probably someone can. If there is a man, probably Jerry. Both displays are LTPO Super Retina XDR OLED displays. They have all the whistle and the bells, 120 Hz, HDR10. You can also get Dolby Vision here, 1000. This is the typical brightness and can go up to 2000 in the high brightness mode. Exactly the same specs as the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Again, the main difference here 
is just the bigger display, the thinner bezels and of course a little change in the resolution because of that display. Well, it's not a good idea as it seems to transfer your old iPhone to the new one using wireless communication whatsoever because it only takes 10 hours. So I'm going to try again. Yes, using a cable is definitely a better idea. So I just took out the USB-C cable, hook it up the 15 Pro Max and the 16 Pro Max and yeah, it's not one hour guys, it's two, but this phone is almost full in its 256 gigabytes. By the way, this one as well, the storage inside is NVMe and the rumors say that the battery inside the 16 Pro Max is just a tiny bit bigger than the one in the 15 Pro Max, hopefully resulting into a better battery life. Also, of course, using the advanced technology from the latest a18 pro chip there are also other benefits related to charging the 16 pro max now supports 25 watt charging supported with magsafe and here yeah you just get 15 so that's an increase the iphone 16 pro max comes straight with the latest ios 18 from apple and of course you can also download it and install it on your previous phone too but pay attention guys this is probably one of the main things on the display at least the iphone 16 pro max has really thinner bezels those one here are 1.2 millimeters and those one here are 1.55 and honestly this makes a difference specifically when you're using white backgrounds like this you will be able to tell the difference besides that they really look quite the same and also don't forget that the 16 pro max has a larger 6.9 inch display versus the 6.7 here so if you're gonna go really for the biggest iphone screen if this is just a reason enough for you to upgrade you might want to do so another slight design change that i was able to notice is how the camera is protruded and this here is actually the iphone 15 pro max okay this here is the 16 Pro Max and I have a feeling that the cameras just stand out a bit. One of the new things inside is the latest chip. Here we have the A18 Pro and Apple claimed that that's 15% faster than the chip and the 15 Pro Max, the A17 Pro and it also uses less power which is actually not that bad at all but overall it's the same hexa core setup here we have two cores running at almost 4 gigahertz 3.78 and then another four cores running at 2.11 gigahertz the apple gpu is the same six core graphics but it's a slightly overclocked so it's probably a better one and of course we're going to be testing that performance also what is very important for me is how this is going to perform in my heavy duty testing where i do simultaneously things using 5g playing games the standard stuff one of the bigger changes in the 16 pro max is the brand new 48 megapixel ultra wide camera with a larger sensor so of course i'm going to be comparing this versus the s24 ultra the main wide camera is a 48 megapixel shooter with an aperture of 1.8 then we do have a 12 megapixel periscope and this is using 5x optical zoom it has os and dual pixel autofocus but there are some things inside the camera and the processing which are a bit different so the first thing you see here is photographic style so this photographic style use advanced scene understanding and adjust specific colors in the scene so you can now express your creativity i can hit try it let's test it with my favorite mercedes sl and guys you're gonna see what happened right now so i'm using standard and i am able now to just do these things in the viewfinder right so remember i am not editing a photo like say in post-production i'm now able to change the tone okay overall feeling of the picture with all these nuances direct in the viewfinder and there are more modes like standard vibrant okay so you can see i can go like this or like that and you can also decide how much you want to apply we have natural look Okay, we have luminous, dramatic, really there are so many things. And by the way, you can correct tone, color and palette. And if you messed up with the settings, you can just click here and boom, it is going to reset back to basis. Now let me show you this button here, right? Because Apple are calling it camera control, but it's actually a button used to control the camera. So it is a button you can just press it, all right? The moment I press it, we have this nice animation, all right? The camera is gonna open. And then guys, you can just try to perform the magic with it. Now let's try to use the button. When I press it, boom, I'm gonna get a photo. What happens when I try to manipulate it? Apparently nothing. So there is haptic feedback incorporated and you're gonna be able to tell when you're doing something, but honestly, it requires a learning curve. This button definitely requires some time to get used to it so there is a learning curve also you can just use this interface here so it's not only that they put a physical button there they also change the interface of the camera but it's a bit questionable at this time if one will use it quite often also guys i have problems to 
just click the button. I usually want to click here, but the button is a bit there. And the thing is, this is a rather large and huge phone. Also, it weighs 227 grams. I'm not really sure if I can use it with one hand, and I have like really rather big hands. You have the option to choose cameras. Apparently, you can also choose the styles here, the tone. So there are plenty of things. Zoom and also, of course, the depth. So there are really a lot of camera settings that are incorporated here, but it will definitely require you to play with this. And now it's time to check what banks sent me. Honestly, I have this package since almost two months. I don't really know what's inside. If you're not familiar with banks, then you might check my videos. I did a lot. They sent me so many cases. And by the way, banks is my first choice for cases. I use this daily on my S24 Ultra. Phone case, phone case, phone case. <laughs> wow. Okay, cool. Yep. Definitely a case for my 16 Pro Max as it has the cutouts for the camera control and it's going to be very interesting to test how this is going to work with the phone oh wow <laughs> Ooh, this is really very slick this here will give you the maximum protection all right you can see it's covered from everywhere this here is a bit more on light side but yeah you know you get the good stuff the kevlar Oh wow, okay. This is absolutely gorgeous. It is the exact same pattern I'm also using on my S24 Ultra matching case. So I have cases for my iPhone 16 Pro Max. And now it's about time to test how well the camera control button can be controlled when you use the iPhone in a case. All right, let me just put it there. Okay. And this is the iPhone 16 Pro Max with a Banks case on, all right. Yeah, honestly, not that bad. I do believe that in general, this is going to really require a learning curve because first you need to get used to the button without a case. And then second, when you are using the phone with a case, you have to adjust a bit more. But honestly, I do like it more with a case because you know what? At least now I know where this button is. Without the case, I'm not really sure where the button is. So I have to press here, here and there. Now with the case, thanks to this curving here, I know definitely where it is. And honestly, I don't really think it's a problem to use the camera control button while you are wearing the case. You know really where the button is located. So a very good job by Banks, guys. If you wanna check Banks out, I'm gonna put some links down below. All my apps are there, everything's downloaded. The setup seems to be easy. What happens next, guys? Besides the fact that I need to test the phone for a bit, but I really know that you wanna see a comparison between the S24 Ultra video camera and photo camera versus the iPhone 16 Pro Max. This is coming very soon and I'm really glad that you stayed throughout the video and I hope that you enjoyed. If you wanna check some of my other content, guys, please do so. If you like the video, you know what to do. Stay safe, VST, you're over and bye.